What happens if your spontaneous labor stops? What happens if your induction of labor is not successful? And how do we know when this happens? This video will cover arrest of labor. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. In the previous two videos, we learned about why someone might need an induction of labor and what methods are used. But what happens if the methods have been used and your cervix is still not fully dilated to 10 centimeters? In this video, we'll discuss what's known as arrest of labor and the criteria used to diagnose it. While you're watching, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Before we can diagnose arrest of labor, we need to learn the normal progression of labor. Labor is divided into three stages, the first, second, and third stage. The first stage is then split into two phases called the latent phase and the active phase. The first stage is when your cervix is dilating from closed to 10 centimeters. The second stage is when you are pushing to deliver the baby. And the third stage is delivering the placenta. The two phases of the first stage are defined based on how dilated the cervix is. Latent phase occurs from when the cervix is closed to 5 centimeters. The active phase is from 6 centimeters to fully dilated at 10 centimeters. Latent phase is known to be a much slower phase and can take several hours to days. Active phase is usually much quicker, lasting only a couple hours. The length of the second stage depends on how many previous vaginal deliveries the patient has had. The delivery of the placenta in the third stage usually only takes a couple minutes, but it too has its own criteria for arrest. Both phases of the first stage can either be prolonged, meaning they're taking longer than usual, but the cervix is still dilating, so labor is progressing, or arrested, meaning the cervix has completely stopped dilating. To determine if a stage is prolonged or has arrested depends on how many vaginal deliveries you've had in the past. If this is your first delivery, you're called nulliparous. If you've had one or more vaginal deliveries, you're called multiparous. A prolonged first stage of labor for a nulliparous person is 20 hours, whereas it's only 14 hours for a multiparous person. This is because a multiparous person's body has already gone through the process before, so it knows what it's doing and should progress faster. The definition of arrest of labor in the first stage, also known as arrest of dilation because your cervix has stopped dilating and did not reach 10 centimeters, does not actually depend on being nulliparous or multiparous. It has three criteria. Your cervix has reached at least six centimeters, your water has broken either naturally or artificially by your OBGYN provider, and one of the following. Either you've been contracting well for four hours, or you've not been contracting well for six hours, and your cervix still hasn't dilated. The definition for arrest of labor in the second stage, or arrest of descent, where you're pushing the baby but they're not moving down, does depend on your previous vaginal deliveries and whether you have an epidural. This is because an epidural can make it difficult for some people to feel contractions and to push well. For an oliparous patient, this stage has arrested after three hours of pushing or four hours of pushing with an epidural. For multiparous patients, this stage has arrested after two hours of pushing or three hours of pushing with an epidural. Depending on how far you're able to push the baby's head, you may not need to have a C-section. If the baby's head is low enough, an operative delivery with a vacuum or forceps can be performed. These techniques will be explained in a future video. Finally, for patients who have come to the hospital for an induction of labor, they can even have an arrest of the latent phase. This is called a failed induction. This occurs if the various induction methods have been performed for over 24 hours, including breaking your water and receiving Pitocin for 12 to 18 hours after your water breaks. If you have a failed induction or an arrest of labor in the first or second stage, the only other option is to have a C-section. Statistically speaking, if you have reached the point of one of these definitions, it is highly unlikely the baby will be born vaginally. Another important note is that there are other events that may occur during labor and pushing that might require an immediate delivery via C-section, such as any concerning changes in the baby's heart rate. Your provider will discuss these with you if they occur. Before you go, here is one tip you can use to promote your labor progression. Have a continuous one-to-one -one support person with you, such as a doula, a family member, or a friend. This has been shown to help labor and reduce the need for C-sections. They can be there to provide you with physical and emotional support, such as breathing techniques, moving into comfortable positions, giving positive affirmations, massages, and much more.
Thanks for watching. Now hit that subscribe button and like the video. Then check out this other video to keep learning.